Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this fixed beam using consistent deformation method. The span of the beam is given as 8 meter. We have uniformly distributed load 64 kN per meter. It acts for a distance of 3 meter. It starts at a distance of 2 meter from the left support and it ends at the distance of 5 meter from the left support. Now in this beam, let us find the degree of static indeterminacy. In this beam, the number of unknown reactions and movements are 4. They are MA, RA, RB and MB. The available equilibrium equations are 2. So the degree of static indeterminacy will be 4 minus 2, we will get 2. To make this beam statically determinate from the point B, let us release MB and RB. You can see that from the point B, I have released MB and RB. So the point B becomes a free end. Previously, this was a fixed beam, but now it is a cantilever beam. Now let us make the coordinates diagram. Let us keep the vertical reaction RB as the first coordinate. Let us keep the movement MB as the second coordinate. We know these two equations. Using these two equations, we have to find RB and MB. In these two equations, P1 is RB and P2 is MB. We have to find the displacements delta 1 1, delta 1 2, delta 2 1, delta 2 2, delta 1 L and delta 2 L. For that we have to find the movements M, M1 and M2. First let us find the movement M. Using the given loads we have to find the movement M. We have to make sections in this beam. In this beam, there are three different parts BD, DC and CA. So we have to make three sections, one in BD, one in DC and one in CA. You can see that I have made three sections, one in BD, one in DC and one in CA. Now let us make a table. In the table, first let us enter the members. We know that there are three members, BD, DC and CA. For all of these three sections, the origin is the point B. Let us enter that. For BD, the limit is 0 to 3. For DC, the limit is 3 to 6. And for CA, the limit is 6 to 8. Now let us find the moment M in the member BD. Up to the section there is no load so the moment will be 0. Now let us find the moment in the member DC. To find the moments let us use left hand side rule. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. Up to the section in DC we have uniformly distributed load 64. It is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. For this load we have to take this distance. This distance is x minus 3. We know that with the uniformly distributed load we have to multiply the distance and distance by 2. Minus 64 upon 2 we will get minus 32. x minus 3 into x minus 3 it will be x minus 3 the whole square. Let us enter the movement inside the table. Now let us find the movement in the member CA. Up to this section, we have the uniformly distributed load 64. It is acting for the distance of 3. It is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. And then we have to multiply with the distance 3. Then we have to open a bracket. We have to divide the distance by 2, so 3 by 2. Then we have to add the remaining distance. This remaining distance is x minus 6. We have to add that. 
3 by 2 minus 6 it will be minus 4.5 then we can multiply minus 192 with this when we do that we will get this let us apply that now we are going to find the moment m1 for that we have to remove all of the loads from the beam and we have to apply unit load in the first coordinate we have kept rb upwards so we have to apply unit load in the upward direction you can see that in the point b i have applied unit load in the upward direction now let us find the moment m1 in the members bd dc and ca up to all of the sections we have only one load that is the unit load for all of these sections it is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is x 1 into x we will get x so for bd dc and ca the moment m1 will be x now we are going to find the moment m2 for that we have to apply unit moment in the second coordinate our second coordinate is mb we have kept this coordinate in the clockwise direction so that we have to apply the unit moment in the clockwise direction you can see that in the point b i have applied unit moment in the clockwise direction now let us find m2 in bd dc and ca up to all of the sections we have only one thing that is the unit movement it is acting in the clockwise direction we know that in the left hand side rule clockwise is negative so m2 in all of the members will be minus 1 now let us find delta 1l the formula is integration of m m1 upon ei dx for the member bd m is 0 so no need to make the integration we can directly enter 0 for dc the limit is 3 to 6 and for ca the limit is 6 to 8 then let us apply the values of m and m1 now we can take a calculator and do these two integrations if you do not know how to do integrations in the calculator see the description below there is a link you can click the link and watch the video i have used the calculator and got these two values when we add these two we will get delta 1l for delta 1l we will get minus 8360 upon ei now let us find delta 2l the formula is integration of m m2 upon ei dx let us apply the values of m and m2 for delta 2l we will get 1248 upon ei now let us find delta 11 the formula is integration of m1 square upon ei dx we know that for all of the members the value of m1 is the same ei is also constant in this case we can apply a shortcut to find the answer in single integration we have to apply the limit 0 to 8 in this way we can easily find delta 11 which is 512 upon 3 ei now let us find delta 12 and delta 21 both of them are having the same formula integration of m1 m2 upon ei dx we know that for all of the members m1 and m2 are same m1 m2 is equal to x into minus 1 we will get minus x here also we can use the shortcut and find delta 1 2 and delta 2 1 which are minus 32 upon ei now let us find delta 2 2 the formula is integration of m2 square upon ei dx using the shortcut we can find delta 2 2 easily which is 8 upon ei we have found all of the displacements in these two equations let us apply them so that we will get these two equations now we can take a calculator 
and solve these two equations. If you do not know how to solve two equations in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. I have used the calculator and got the values of RB and MB. Now let us apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0 and find RA. RA and RB are acting upwards. So both of them are positive. The UDL is acting downwards. So it will be negative and the distance is 3. For RA we will get 113.0625. Now let us take a moment about A and find MA. MB is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. RA is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 8. The uniformly distributed load is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. The distance is 3. Then we have to open a bracket. We have to divide the distance by 2 and then we have to add the remaining distance which is 2. Let us assume that MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive. Finally for MA we will get a positive value that means our assumption is correct. MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction. Now let us find the shear force values. I am going to find the shear force values from the point A. In this case, we have to follow right hand side rule. Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. Using the rule, we can find the shear force values. Here you can see the shear force diagram. In this point, the shear force becomes zero. In this point, there will be maximum positive bending moment. In this point, let us make a section and find the distance. You can see that in that point, I have made a section at a distance of x from the point A. In this point, let us find the shear force. VA is acting upwards so that it will be positive. The UDL is acting downwards so it will be negative. For the UDL, we have to take this distance. This distance is x minus 2. In this way, we can find x. For x, we will get 3.77 meter. Now, let us find the maximum positive bending moment. MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative. The reaction is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 3.77. The uniformly distributed load is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is 3.77 minus 2 so that it will be 1.77. For the maximum positive bending moment we will get 125.74. Let us find the bending moment in the point A. In the point A, we have MA which is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative. Let us find the bending moment in the point C. MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative. BA is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 2. For the bending moment at C, we will get 25.87. To find the bending moments in the points B and D, we can use the left hand side rule because it will be easy. Let us find the bending moment in the point B. In the point B, we have MB which is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. Now let us find the bending moment in the point D. MB is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. The vertical reaction is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 3. For the bending moment at D, we will get 77.06. Here you can see the bending moment diagram. 
in these two points the bending moment becomes zero we can make sections in these two points and find the distances you can see that i have made two sections the first section at a distance of x from the point a and the second section at a distance of x from the point b to find this value of x we can use the right hand side rule using the right hand side rule we can take a moment about the section finally for x we will get 1.77 using left hand side rule we can find the value of x for x we will get 2.02 meter let us apply both of them now we are going to end this session thank you for watching this video